Well, earlier uh, this evening, they presented David Robinson of the San Antonio Spurs with the IBM Award. Here's Stan Kelly, the PA announcer. Defensive and defensive statistics. You see this laptop being handed to David Robinson? It's no ordinary laptop. It's actually a trophy, an MVP trophy. Yeah, crazy, right? This award for the most valuable or impactful player in the NBA used to be a real thing. Magic Johnson won it, Michael Jordan won it, Shaq won a couple. It was a pretty cool award throughout the 80s and 90s. How they decided the winner of this award? A mathematical algorithm, a formula, an MVP award based purely on statistics. And it's the best and worst thing the NBA has ever done. Today's video is sponsored by DraftKings. My friends, it's been six months. No Sunday night matchups. No afternoons of watching your team's quarterback butcher another third and goal. No football. But we're back, baby. Football season is upon us. And DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL, is here to get you in on the action. New customers download the DraftKings app, use promo code Jimmy High Roller, bet just $5 on any wager, and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's right. Earn $200 in bonus bets for simply placing a $5 wager. And you can stay in on the action with DraftKings same game parlays by combining multiple bets from the same game for a shot at an even bigger payout. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, you can still win big with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Kick your season off with an automatic dub. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code Jimmy Highroller. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Jimmy Highroller only at DraftKings Sportsbook. What if the NBA's most valuable player was decided not by voters, but by stats? Like, just stats. The results may not be what we would like to see, but at least they would be objective. Voters of the NBA's MVP award usually get it right, and the most valuable player in the eyes of fans is almost always the player who walks away with the coveted trophy every year. But why not just remove all doubt and use an objective metric to determine who the league's MVP really is? Well, that's exactly what the NBA used to do. Back in 1984, the NBA created an award called the IBM Award. Yeah, that IBM. And it was an award that mirrored the tech company's business philosophy by using a computer formula that measured a player's statistical contributions to their team to determine who the most valuable player in the league was. The award was given out for 19 seasons, from 1984 to 2002, and was won by some of the greatest players of all time. Hakeem Olajuwon won the award, Tim Duncan won it in one season, Charles Barkley won it three times, and David Robinson won the award five times. So how does a trophy handed out in the form of a laptop won by some of the greatest players of all time just cease to exist, with many NBA fans today unaware that it was even a thing in the first place? Well, in 1992, right in the middle of Michael Jordan's prime, Dennis Rodman won the award. And in 1999, when no one on planet Earth could slow down peak Shaquille O'Neal, Dikembe Mutombo won the award. Because using math to decide the most impactful player in the NBA is not as objective as you would think. The formula for this IBM award, despite the looks of it, was very simple. It took the total counting stats from any given player throughout a season, plus the win total of their team, and divided it by the counting stats of their team. The result of this calculation was called the IBM score. The player who had the highest IBM score in any given season was given the IBM award. All of this is really just calculating how much a player contributed to their team throughout a season. In 1992, Dennis Rodman won the award with an IBM score of 109.73. Michael Jordan, at his absolute peak, finished the season with an IBM score of 86.49. Nowhere near Rodman. And to understand how a tragedy like this could even happen, we need to take a deeper look into this long forgotten award. Here are the results from the 19 seasons that the NBA handed out the IBM award. And almost immediately, you can see why the league stopped giving out the award. Now you tell me, what jumps out first? Is it the fact that big men won the award 15 out of 19 seasons? Maybe it's the fact that Michael Jordan didn't win a single IBM award throughout the entire 90s. Or maybe it's Dikembe Mutombo beating out the entire league for an award based on overall value. So how does an award that simply looks at stats manage to come up with such a skewed result? 
Well, the answer is in the formula. It resembles the popular PER stat, which when it was created three decades ago was a revolutionary advanced statistic, but today has become a relic of the past. The IBM formula, similar to player efficiency rating, favors efficiency, handicaps production, and doesn't factor in context virtually at all. And similar to PER, this led to big men being heavily favored in the IBM scoring system. In 1992, Michael Jordan had an all-time great season, but his score paled in comparison to Rodman simply because he didn't rebound the ball as much, had more turnovers, and was on a much better team. Because the IBM formula also takes away from individual production based on the overall production of the team. The better your team did, the less your impact would jump out in your IBM score. Michael Jordan's incredible individual numbers boosted overall team numbers, which, oddly enough, led to him having a lower score. The IBM scoring system was broken. In trying to find the most valuable players strictly through numbers, this formula completely removed all context and nuance from the award. Wow, who would have thought? Despite this, the award was a fun side attraction and was actually a small talking point in the MVP discussions at the tail end of these seasons. The concept of this award was awesome. The execution of it was dog water. Did this stop me from sorting through hundreds of players and thousands of stat lines across the last two decades to see who the winners of the IBM award would have been if the league didn't discontinue in 2002? Absolutely not. And so with a formula in one hand and a shitty laptop in the other, I set out on a mission to find the unclaimed winners of the IBM award over the last 20 seasons and give these players what is rightfully theirs. Now, I want to give a quick shout out to Hoops Data for helping me crunch these numbers. The dude is a wizard and has some incredible insight into advanced NBA analytics, so go show him some love over on Instagram. Thanks to him, we were able to gather data across two decades, crunch all the numbers, and find our winners with my sanity still intact. And here are those winners. Now, most of these winners make sense. LeBron would have won seven IBM awards from 2008 to 2018, the most of any player. Prime Kevin Garnett went on a tear winning three in a row. Dwight Howard carrying on the legacy of big men winning two. James Harden and Russell Westbrook joined the short list of guards to ever win the award. And to no one's surprise, Nikola Jokic would have won the last two IBM awards because he's Nikola Jokic. In total, 19 players across 40 years. Some of the greatest individual seasons of all time. And then there's DeAndre Jordan and Rudy Gobert. Your eyes do not deceive you. In a season where Stephen Curry was clearly the best player in the world and won the one and only unanimous MVP in league history, the IBM award would have been given to DeAndre Jordan for his impact on the court. In 2021, a season where Giannis solidified himself as the best player on the planet, the IBM award would have gone to the heavily watered down, offensively stunted version of Giannis. And this, my friends, is why the award no longer exists. Because giving an individual award based on value and impact to Rudy Gobert would be a crime. But I love the idea of an award like this. It could never replace the coveted MVP award, but what if we reintroduced an award similar to the IBM award back into the NBA? This time with a new, more comprehensive and accurate formula to determine the winner. In 2021, Hoopsype featured a great article surveying NBA reps around the league, such as Corey Jez, former head of analytics for the Utah Jazz, about the best advanced statistics available today. And out of the 13 composite metrics included in the survey, player efficiency rating, a formula similar to IBM's, came in dead last. The statistics that came out on top were the LeBron stat. Yes, there is a stat called the LeBron estimated plus minus and daily plus minus. Unlike advanced stats of the past, these newer metrics all factor in context thanks to breakthroughs in real-time tracking data. As Corey Jez mentions in the article, more representative all-in-one metrics need to capture the impact players have when they don't log a box score event. And this is what many of these new advanced metrics do. Because impacting the game can and often does happen outside of the box score. Personally, I'm a big proponent of the EPM metric. So what if we handed out an award each season to the player who leads the league in EPM? Call it the Impact Player Award or something like that. Thing is, the winner of the MVP usually ends up leading the league in this metric. And I don't know if that's a reflection of how good the stat really is or how good we are at picking the most valuable player each season. 
In fact, the IBM Award, for all of its glory and flaws, can teach us a thing or two about how we watch the game and what we value. Advanced stats are really cool. They can give us insight that we otherwise might overlook. Where some players contribute within the box score, others perpetually contribute outside of it. But numbers can never tell the full story, at least not yet. And the best metric of all is to just watch the games for yourself.